Hey everyone, Chris Epling here. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. COVID-19 is here, cancellations. There's tons of people worrying about what's gonna happen, but I think it's really important during these times for us to remain calm and look what's available around us for us to use. And um, you know, I think these videos that we're gonna be creating will be a great tool and just something you can pull from. Uh, you can use these videos while you're out of school or you have students at home who um, aren't going to school and you can follow these real simple guidelines, uh, basic materials needed, and you can create some cool stuff while you're home. If you do create something using these videos, please share it. We'd love to see whatever it is you created. Um, we'll have links and information provided um, within the video or later on, at least within the description, hopefully, that can give you um, a little bit of guidance on where you can share your uh, creation. So please do that. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Remain calm. Everybody, just uh, let's just take this time to create some art together and uh, hope you enjoy our short tutorials. I like to start videos by talking a little bit about the materials we're going to be using, so let's look at that for a second. Now, I don't want to go too overboard with the materials because I want to make what's available maybe around you at home so you don't have to go out searching for this stuff um, or be in public as much as you have to, I guess. It's terrible saying that, but in a way, a lot of people are feeling that way. Nobody really wants to go out. Um, it's just part of this, you know, limiting this social distance between one another and trying to be more aware of what we do with our hands after we touch stuff. So let's suspend all that for a little bit and focus just on using our hands in a positive way, in a more constructive way, which is drawing. Now, I'm a comic fan. I like the medium a lot, so it's only going to make sense to me that we start this initial video off talking about creating comics at home. So if you have a student that maybe is really interested in art and telling stories, sharing ideas, conveying thoughts, as an editorial cartoonist, I get the chance to do that a lot during the week. So it's always a challenge for me, but I love doing it. So let's challenge you today by creating your own comic strip. Now what you're gonna be needing is a pencil, of course. That's a very important tool for a cartoonist. Does it really matter what type of pencil it is? Now we won't go into the variations of pencils today, but this is a HB number two pencil, standard classroom pencil. I'm also gonna be using a pen. Now this looks like a really fancy pen maybe, but it's not, it's only that I don't have Sharpies here, but you do want a fine tip pen. You can use a ballpoint pen too, that'd be fine. Something though you can put ink down on top of your pencil lines whenever you create it. Now, another very important tool we're gonna to be needing is basic paper. So. If you have any copying paper at home, that's all you need. Copying paper is fine. You don't need um, any particular brand. You don't need any particular type of drawing paper specific for drawing. Just paper to put lines on. Now, I use something, um, a little bit of a, a cheat code, if you will, uh, when creating comics sometimes. What I like to do is use a frame. Now, if you have an old picture frame at home, you can pull this out of it. It doesn't matter how many panels there are, one or two. Smaller the better. If you get a really large picture frame, um, the panels are gonna be huge. It'll take up your entire space of your page, which is okay. Or you could just do the old fashioned way, use a ruler. I know that's not often uh, used a lot in daily activities, but rulers are important for art and you can use that. So there's the, the materials that you need to get started. So what we'll do now is jump in and I'll show you the basics of laying out for a, uh, your comic book panels and for your um, layout of your strip. All right, let's get started. Okay, we have our materials ready. We have our paper, pencil. I even brought out a ruler just in case and we're gonna ahead and get started. Now this is just to give you the very basics of creating your own comic strip at home. So if you have access to these panels, how this works is really, really cool. So we basically want to make sure though our panels are aligned pretty good. So I may put it up at the top, move it in just a little bit, and then real simple, I just go in, trace a line. Now, comic strips come in different types of shapes. So you may have multiple panels such as this. You may have six of these, or you may even have a smaller panel here. Um, in that case, if you do have a ruler at home, it's great to go ahead and get started by creating your outline and you just have to basically line it up, have an idea of what it is or how many panels you're gonna to need to um, uh, use in order to tell your uh, story in or whatever's gonna be happening in your comic strip. You don't have to be perfect with this stuff. Have fun with it, just throw out some different grids. You could play around with different patterns even. This is a see-through ruler. Don't need a see-through ruler. You just need a basic ruler 
and you can line things up like this. Now I didn't mention earlier, but you will need an eraser. Erasers are really important. I mess up all the time. So having a, an eraser nearby to correct those mistakes helps a lot. Now to get these boxes to be nice and even, I like to start by somewhere of a marker with another box and then drop it down some. And I like to have a variation in my lines too, on my panels. I don't want the same panel over and over. So if you do want to use the same um, shape of a panel over and over, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to spice it up a little bit, you can. Now over here in the corner, I have room for another panel and then one more at the bottom. And you can go ahead and outline those too since you already have your ruler handy if you have one at home. Hopefully you do. If you don't, you can even take the edge of a piece of paper, believe it or not, fold it nice and straight, and then put that piece of paper down on top of the surface of what you're drawing on, and you can make your shapes like that as well. Now, a lot of times I know what I want to do before I start drawing, so I don't just create boxes like this and just then fill the art in. I know kind of what I want to do before I ever start. But in this case, there's, you know, there's no rule in that. You can start out literally by just having a bunch of panels and then fill those in. Uh, you don't really need an idea to start out with. It's good to have one though. So you may want to talk about it, you know, maybe you have brothers or sisters at home or a parent may help you come up with some ideas for what it is you want to say. You could even, if you wanted to, do a comic strip about how you feel about what's going on uh, in the world in terms of this, uh, uh, coronavirus and everything happening that's not what you have to do of course it's not the point of this but if you wanted to you could now a rule of thumb that I have is the first panel that you see is always going to be a title panel so you have to title your comic strip something editorial cartoons which I produce for the newspapers work differently you don't necessarily have to have a title the artwork fills up one giant space so for the purpose of this I'm going to call this Bob the cat and you can do fun lettering in here just go in and Put yourself a title and like something like that. Make your letters look kind of neat. Bob the cat, right? Dot, dot, dot. All right, so I have a title from our comic strip. Now, beginning with the first panel, after you have your title, and you can even have the title be its own panel too. That's, that's okay, but I like to fill some artwork in. I may go in now and I'm gonna start drawing this little creature that supposed to resemble a cat and put some hair and a ear now you may have to erase multiple times you know I do I have to erase a lot I've drawn a whole lot too though so if it looks like I'm knocking this out pretty easy it's because I've drawn so much so I kinda know what it is I want to do with the uh, my, my pencil lines before I start because I've drawn so much so don't get discouraged but having a character is important titling the comic strip, sometimes with the name of that main character is important. Think of Garfield. Peanuts is different. You have a lot of different characters in Peanuts, but if you have a lot of characters in your comic strip, that's fine too. Now, what do you want to say? Now, in each one of these panels, you can put something different. So we, in this one, we may have uh, Bob or Cat thinking about something. And so I may draw him a little different this time, maybe looking straight on. He's a little excited. He's a little nervous, maybe. So he's thinking about something. This is a thought balloon used in comics. When this is used, I know a lot of you probably already know this already, but whenever this is used, the character's thinking something. And usually others in the comic strip don't really know what it is that the character's thinking, right? It's in his head or her head. So you, you have different tools you can use to convey your stories with. Put a little bit of background in there. You can fill up all the space of your panels. That's always good. Let's say that Bob is like my cat sometimes, especially in the morning. He's hungry and he's wondering, hey, wait a minute, my food bowl's empty, right? So over here, let's have Bob now walking to tell or let his owner know, hey, I'm hungry. He looks like he needs to eat anyway a little bit. I've drawn him kind of skinny. So here's Bob walking now. And you may have to draw out your, your, your uh, panel scenes a few times before you get it down exactly the way you want it. And we'll have this be an armchair here. Now I've drawn a lot, like I said, so don't get discouraged. We'll just have a leg showing here and a shoe and an arm. So we don't really see the whole person. We just see a little bit of the person here, right? 
and we can have him now saying something. Bob, this is a speech balloon, and of course, there we go, one extra little loop on my W, but that's okay. So he's meowing to his owner, and here maybe we can have the owner looking down at Bob. So creating a comic strip, really, you, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of words. I know a lot of students really like superheroes. If you're into superheroes, you could do a superhero comic. That's fine, too. If you have a pet at home, you could maybe draw a car cartoon strip about the pet. That's how um, Garfield really um, was, was created. The, the creator of Garfield you know, had a funny tabby cat and um, would notice these behaviors that the cat would do and he thought well hey you know what I'm gonna put this into a comic strip it's kind of funny and well the rest is history so who knows maybe your your dog at home could be the next huge comic book star right so we have Bob now saying meow again and what he really wants is wet food of course all right and we move on now to this panel here and we'll have Bob looking at his bowl kind of angrily disappointedly maybe and what Bob is going to be getting instead of wet food is his arch nemesis dry food right he's not very happy about it I've got a big bowl of dry food right here if anything like uh, your your pet is anything like Bob then you know a little bit what I mean if you give your pet um, wet food uh, I do sometimes my, my wife doesn't like giving uh, the cat too much wet food he gets a little spoiled and then the dog doesn't really like to give their animal uh, cat wet food but now we'll have his owner sort of kneeling down pouring the wet dry food out into the bowl and there we go include your name at the top of course and then what you can do from here is you take your pen that you have and you go back in now if I can find one here that works let's see if this one will work I may have to grab a different one because this one should work it's good to have a working pen of course and what you want to do is trace over top of all the lines that you used when you created your drawing right and you don't have to trace over every line but trace over the lines you want to keep now what happens is after you traced over this okay and then you also of course trace over the the borders that you have for your panels you don't have to be super careful have fun with it you can create an entire comic book from home this way but you trace over all the lines that you want to keep and the ones you don't you don't trace over and then at the end once this ink dries you then will go and erase erase all the pencil lines and what you're left with at the very end is your own completed comic strip now like I said you could create your comic strip about anything in the world you wanted but while you're at home you have time to think about this in a way and you could form an entire storyline based on one character this is just one of the many things you can do while you're out of school and at home and in between maybe studying is take this time and create something cool and interesting in the form of a comic strip so I hope you enjoyed this short advice tutorial um, maybe just a little supplement to your time at home uh, today we'll be producing more of these in the future be on the lookout for them and if you created your own comic strip share it with us just send an image the um, um, instructions on where to send that to will be included somewhere in the post so check that out and be if you want to include your name that would be great any information you want us to know about yourself include that too maybe your age um, if you want to include where you go to school, that's fine too. If not, don't worry about it. But we'd love to see it. We'd love to see your work. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Stay safe. Use your hands in creative ways. Don't worry too much. And have fun creating art.